God with the gifts he has blessed us with. From the seasoned singers with decades of experience to new members discovering their voices, each person brings a unique perspective and passion to the mix. Together, we raise our voices in joyful worship, celebrating the beauty of creation and the grace of God. In this diverse community, united by our love for God and music, every rehearsal and performance becomes a moment of connection and inspiration. We would love for you to join our choir. Please email exaltion at antiochbmt.org for more information. Hello, church family. My name is Major Goldman, and I am your director of music here at the Antioch Church. Psalms 95 and 1 says, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. You do not have to be a soloist, but if you have a passion for singing, we would love to have you join one of our many choirs. Here at Antioch, we have a choir just for you, for all ages and styles. For example, we have seven choirs for you to become an active servant. We have our children, youth, young adult, men, women, Voices of Antioch, and the hymn choir. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me or Marie Sanders for further information. Remember, we are better together. Hello, church family. My name is Felicia Young. I am the coordinator for Global Missions Ministries here at Antioch. Our mission is to fulfill God's three core values, the Great Commission, the Great Commandment, and the Great Calling. And we're doing it on a global scale. Presently, we're actively involved and engaged in communities in Africa, we're in Haiti, Belize, the Bahamas, as well as various locations across the United States. So if you have a passion for making a difference in people's lives and you wanna do so worldwide, you might wanna get involved with this ministry. So feel free to reach out to me through the church office or via email at feliciay at antiochbmt.org. Have a great day. Good morning, church family. My name is Minister Stephanie. I am the camp coordinator for Jacob's Ladder. Do you have a child, a grandchild, cousin, niece, or nephew between the ages of four and 12? If so, you can register them for Jacob's Ladder Summer Camp. We begin on June 24th through August the 2nd from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday through Friday. Your child will learn Christian etiquette, arts and crafts, sports, dance, music, health and safety, and other exciting enrichment activities daily. They will also go on weekly field trips. There's no need to worry because your child will be in the hands of trained, certified staff. If you would like to register your child, you can go to AntiochBMT.org today. There's a $25 non-refundable deposit fee and a weekly cost of $150. If you have more than one child, we do have multiple sibling discounts available. Spots are limited, so make sure you sign up today. Hello, church family. My name is Deacon Arthur Lewis, and I belong to the mighty men of Antioch. If you are a man, this is the perfect ministry for you to join. Not only do you have the chance to praise God with other strong men, but you also have the opportunity to fellowship with other believers in Christ. I look forward to seeing you sing with us next time. If you are interested in joining, please email exalting at antiochbmt.org. And don't forget, we are the mighty men of Antioch. I love you, Jesus. And I worship and adore you. And I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Good morning, church family. I'm Chase Arsenault, and I'm a member of the Young Adult Choir here at Antioch. If you are in between the ages of 18 to 35, we would love to have you for our choir rehearsal. We sing every Sunday at 10 a.m. service, and we would love to have you as a member of our choir. Good morning, church family. Thank you so much for joining us today. Before service begins, there are a few rules of the house. Rule number one, prepare to rejoice. The Bible tells us to rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. Rule number two, prepare to receive. This is your place of blessings. And rule number three, prepare to be restored. Healing happens every time we gather in the presence of our God.
We're now approaching the top of the hour, and it's time to do what we do best. Make sure you stay until the end of service for news you can use. It's now time for devotion. Will you stand to your feet, Anna York Church family, and help me celebrate the one for us who is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We do that by clapping our hands, by raising our voices, and by honoring him. If God's been really good to you, here's what I want you to do for me right quick. Touch just two people and tell them he's been so good to me. Will you do that? Just two people. Well, you don't have to move. Just two people. Just tell them he's been so good to me. He's been so wonderful. He's been so all of that. Um, we believe this morning in a God who heals and mends and saves and provides and protects and uh, we are here for one reason today, to celebrate him in great and glorious fashion. With that being said, we want to begin in prayer. How many of you all still believe in the power of prayer? If you're here today, listen, with someone you love or you're alone, I want to ask you to do me a favor. Make small pockets of two, three, no more than five people and just make simple circles all around this cathedral. It's how we begin worship. Uh, and just tell your neighbor, God has something special for you today. Make a circle. Y'all make one right here. Y'all find, there you go, there you go. Make us, there you go. Simple circles all around us, all around us. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, God has something prepared for you today. Tell your neighbor that you should have an air of expectancy from God. God has something for you. Tell your neighbor, I'm about to pray for you. And then all I want you to do is spend the next minute in prayer. When I get to the name of Jesus, just 60 seconds praying for your neighbor. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, here we go. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Pray for that neighbor. That's all I ask that you do. Pray for them, pray for them, pray for them. 45 more seconds, pray. Thirty seconds more, pray. Fifteen seconds. Father, bless the hand that I'm holding. I don't know what my neighbor has had to go through to get here today. But I know this, you've been with my neighbor every step of the way. Bless the hand that I hold. If my neighbor is weak, give them strength. If my neighbor is torn, mend them. If my neighbor is under attack, be a shield of protection. Lord, if my neighbor is lacking, stretch their resources. But bless the hand that I hold in the only name that declares the blessing for our lives. The name Jesus Christ, we pray. And all of the blessed people of this house, give the Lord a shout on purpose and shout amen. And give the Lord a big hand clap of honor and praise. Ushers! You may allow worshipers to enter. We have at our church a vision statement. We live by it. It's a mantra for ministry. It reads, Antioch Missionary Baptist Church is a Christ-centered biblical church that meets the needs of a total person by exalting a Savior, evangelizing a sinner, equipping a save, and find the saints, and encouraging every soul. So y'all wait, I just got to tell y'all. So what really happened, I told them walking in, they could say the vision statement. Two of those children can't read yet, but they know the church's vision statement. Y'all ain't playing with me today. 
So they said, Pastor, can we say the vision statement? I said, yeah, you can. But I forgot. Man, it's Youth Sunday at the Antioch Church. Y'all help me celebrate children. Hold on. I'm going to say it one more time. It's Youth Sunday at the Antioch Church. Hold on. We love our kids. We support them. I said it's Youth Sunday at the Antioch Church. Hold on. I need some people who were raised in church and they made you sing. Anybody that they made you sing? And they didn't care what key you was in. They would just say, sing for Jesus, baby. Y'all help me celebrate our young people, man. It's Youth Sunday. Let them hear a big hand clap of love today. I love them so, so much. Um, we have special guests today as well, man. I am so peacock proud and honeymoon happy to have these Panthers from Prairie View on the hill here with us, man. The Prairie View A&M Concert Choir is here. Hey, will you do me a favor? Show them some Antioch love right quick. Just, we are honored. Okay, here we go. All right, y'all ready? Do we need my mic? Y'all good? Okay, amen. Remain standing as our children lead us in worship.
Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. There is none like the Lord. There is none like the Lord. None like it. None like it. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Y'all give the wave team a hand on this morning.
laugh and smile Cause it's been a while It's been like a whole day Since I stopped so you could hold me But this child awaits Strong in the faith Lord, you are the refuge That I can't wait to get to Cause I can't let it That you bring to my life And ooh, there's something about the way Your sun shines on my face It's a love so true I can never get enough of you This feeling can't be wrong I'm about to get my worship on Take me away It's a beautiful day Seems to rain all my dreams It's not a big, not a big deal Let it wash all the bugs off my windshield Cause you're showing me that In you I'm free And you're still the refuge That I've just got to get to So I won't let a day go Won't let a day go by So put the drop top down Turn it up, I'm ready to fly And ooh you help me celebrate these children how we thank God for them give all of them another big hand clap of honor and love let them hear that and to the parents who are here the guardians grandmoms granddads thank you for getting them to rehearsal let them hear it one more time they did an amazing job I want to pause long enough to say welcome to our visitors and our guests. And I want to begin by our online worldwide web-based church family, both e-member and visitor, by saying thank you all for making the Antioch Church in Beaumont, Texas your choice. Hey, 3920, give our online web-based church family a big hand clap of love and Media team, put those emojis up all over the screen. Thank you for joining us today. If you are a first-time guest, you are not uh, uh, just here, you're here for the very first time. You're not from the Prairie View a and University campus, but you are a guest here for the very first time. Not from PV, I got a special welcome for them. But if you're here for the very first time, stand at your feet and remain standing. We have some love we want to share with you. Welcome. Hold on. Here is one. Welcome, 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 welcome. Y'all going to be glad you stood up. Welcome, welcome. Remain standing. Hey, Antioch, help me love on our first-time guests. You're receiving a, a small piece like this. Remain standing. Remain with us. 
because I want you to be able to know that we plan to love on you to let you know we're grateful to have you with us. And if you are here and you have never been here or you have been here before but you came back to see us, not a member just yet, but you said I'm going back to the Antioch Church, would you stand to your feet if you're a guest but not a member just yet? Stand right where you are. We are grateful to have all of you back in our presence today. We are honored to have some very special guests here with us today, and I am just overwhelmed with a sense of joy. Uh, the ladies from Eta Theta Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Did I hear somebody do a ski wee? You gone. It's, it's Antioch. You can let that loop. Man, hold on. Y'all welcome these beautiful ladies. Y'all stand to your feet. Remain standing with us. We're grateful, grateful, grateful for you all. I'm honored today in an overwhelming sense because I know what it's like. Hold on. Y'all remain standing with me. I know what it's like to attend an HBCU. I'm an HBCU baby. Proud alumnus of Texas Southern University, Morehouse School of Religion. Uh, I was raised on HBCU's campuses. And I am thrilled today to have one of the finest HBCUs in this country represented here uh, today with us. Uh, students, uh, faculty, and even a part of their staff is here with us today. Uh, in the person of uh, Dean Gilbert. Where's Dean Gilbert? I just shook her hand. Stan Dean Gilbert. Help me thank God for the Dean and for this marvelous concert choir from Prayer View. I want them to stand. I want y'all to give them some more Antioch love right here. While they stand, when you're walking past a building on the campus of an institution of academic higher learning, not often do you think about the name on the building being the name of a person who is still alive. For the most part, we think of them posthumously like they've already passed on. But I am so thankful that we have been graced to know and love, appreciate, and cherish two of our members specifically today whose names have been immortalized on the campus of Prairie View A&M University, and that is in the person of Deacon Marvin and Sister June Brelsford, whose name is adorned on the College of Arts and Sciences. Y'all not clapping. Y'all help me thank God for them in grand, I mean grand fashion, grand fashion. So we're welcome. Hold on, remain standing. With that in mind, I want to introduce some people of our church family who makes this ministry work for us each week. First of all, my magnificent loving daughter, Simone Elizabeth, who just graduated from Prairie View A&M University with honors, is a proud member of the Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. Yeah, did I hear somebody else with a yip in there? I heard that back there. Y'all give Simone a big hand clap of love today. All of our deacons and deaconess, the leaders of this church, you all stand and remain standing. All of our clergy family remain standing with us. Give them a big hand clap. And then every member of the Antioch Church, y'all stand all over this building and you all help me do something that I think it takes a Christian to do. I want you to help me share the love of Jesus Christ with each other. Hold on. You can't share what you don't have. So if you love the Lord, let me see your hand right quick. Hold on. You love the Lord on Monday. Let me see. What about Tuesday? Wednesday? Thursday. Y'all got to watch them Fridays. Those Fridays can slip up. <laughs> you love them on a Friday. What about a Saturday? Just anybody in here know that you're not all that you need to be, but you love God with everything that you are? Then help me share that love. Here's what I want you to do. Here's the assignment. I want you to find two people you've never met and just tell them, God bless you, and I'm glad to be worshiping with you. Then find one you've never met before and just say the same thing. God bless you. I'm glad to be worshiping with you. Y'all ready? Make that happen. Make that happen. Make that happen. All over the building. Make that happen.
together, amen. Deacon Brelsford, is that your son and your daughter? Man, y'all stand right quick, man. It's good to see you, Cindy, and you all. Man, y'all give them another big hand clap of love as well. For these young people to get up this morning right early, get dressed like they're dressed, get onto a bus, drive two and a half to three hours from Prairie View to Beaumont, it's not just a gift from God, it's a blessing from the corridors of eternal heaven. They could have stopped at any church along the way, but they didn't. They found their way to 3920 West Cardinal Drive, Beaumont, Texas. Elbow your neighbor, tell them favor ain't fair, it just ain't. I don't know how many churches they passed up, but that ain't my business. They stopped at ours. Somebody say, thank God for that. I want you all to help me say welcome to one of the finest choral groups in our country. They've been here before. They have been for us second to none every time they frequented us. And to have them back in these sacred halls we call a cathedral is our benefit and blessing. I want you to give them the kind of welcome back that I know they will never forget. Hey, Antioch Church family, welcome from the hill at Prairie View a and University, their concert chorale. Will you help me welcome them? Man, stand to your feet, man. Don't sit on them. Y'all, y'all stand and let them hear that. We are so grateful to have them back. Amen. Amen and amen. You may take your seat.
I have forgotten my sermon. Let me just tell you, will you help me thank God for the excellence, my God. Let them hear this one more time. Wow. Wow. You know, during our time of welcome, I normally have our elders stand because we don't get where we are by ourselves. I just celebrated 58 years last week. Thank God for all of you for your gifts, your cards, and your kindness. I appreciate it. But I've never seen a sign that read for white only. I've never seen a sign that read for color only. I've never been forced to sit at the back of a bus. But listening to these young people sing, remind me that the sacrifice you make to make sure that the younger group gets ahead is always worth it. Listen to me. I am so grateful for shoulders we stand on like a Marvin and June Brelsford and others who've made great sacrifices so that when they go back to places like Prairie View, it produces the excellence that these people, these young folk up here exemplify. Y'all ought to help me thank God for them just one more time. Psalms 23, I'm on a time clock. They gave me strict instructions, Sister Brailsford, so I, I'm on a time clock. We're in a new series that's entitled Back to the Table. And so if you would, if you don't have the book, it's okay, because today I want to teach a lesson that's not printed on the pages of that particular catalog. If you would stand for the purpose of whispering prayers and receiving the written word for those who can, Psalms 23, the 23rd number of Psalms. Thank God for my dear friend, Pastor Willie Williams, who's here today. Y'all give big Pastor Williams a hand clap of love. Heads about, let's pray. So God, I ask you today to do with me as you always have done. Think with my mind. Talk with my tongue. Stand in my body. Fill me with your spirit, O oh God, so that what comes from me is actually from you. Heal the hurt. Lift the bowed down head. Save some. Bless all. Do it today in the name of your Son, our Savior, and our Lord, the name Jesus, who is Lord in Christ, we pray. And all of God's people that love the Lord Jesus Christ said together, Amen. Psalms 23, let's read it together. The Lord is my shepherd, mm -hmm. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they. Here is our text for today as we study tables in the Bible. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Say amen for the reading. Grab a neighbor by the hand as you stand today. Hopefully it's somebody you love and you like. Look at them and just say, neighbor. I am certain of one thing. God really loves you. Tell your neighbor, I'm for certain of that because he's letting you hold my hand. Tell your neighbor, I did not get where I am easily. 
I've been through struggle, strife, and strain. Tell your neighbor the preacher needs your prayers. All of your amens. Today's sermon subject, I hope you don't mind, but I've invited your enemies too. You touch two people and tell them he invited your enemies too. He invited your enemies too. The grass withers, the flower thereof fades. The word of our God shall last and stand forever. Thank you, ushers. You may take your seats. You all have done a fabulous job. There are times, ladies and gentlemen, when the blessing of the Lord literally overflows you where God does things for you in your life that you know it took God to make happen. Have you ever seen doors open that you know came from God? Has God ever put you in a place that you know it took God to situate you? It's what happened to me not long ago. Deacon Brelsford, God flies me to New York City to interface, dialogue, and have discourse with two of the greatest publishing houses in the known world, the Penguin Random House Publishing Company and Forbes. Okay, for those of you who just don't know, so let me just do this in resuscitation-like form. Uh, I was not the greatest scholastic student you could find. Thank God for my daughter who redeemed my academic image. <laughs> I graduated just barely, and thank you, Lordy. And it wasn't until grad school I learned how to learn. So for me to be sitting in New York City on the 18th floor, Sister June Brelsford interfacing with two of the largest publishing houses in the known world made me know there is a God somewhere. While listening to the CEO and president of Penguin Random House, Naar Malavia, an Indian man, he made a statement, Charity, that I will never, ever forget. He said, business in the book industry is booming. Joe Johnson, he said that they have not sold this many books in almost 25 years. However, he noted that today's best seller is still the Holy Bible. For a Christian, it ought to be a shout for you. It's because the book that people still buy the most on all seven continents is the book that's in your hand. The book that allows us to see the celestial shores of eternal glory, the very throne room of an eternal God. A book that gives us the prophecies of today that impact tomorrow, that lets you know that no matter how hard life may be, be, you win in the end. It is a book, ladies and gentlemen, that shows us the salvation of the sinner. It shows us the victory of the church. It blesses us with the hymns of the Hebrew that will tell you, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. There is no book like the Bible, the Jewish Talmud, and those other books that we have written, the Babylonian Talmud, the Jewish Mishnah, the, the Muslim Quran. Though they are books of faith, there is no book like your book. 3,566,480 letters, 783,183 words, 31,102 verses, 1,189 chapters, 929 in the Old Testament, 260 in the New Testament, 39 books in the Old Testament filled with the Torah, the Nethavim and the Kethavim, 27 books in the New 
Old Testament filled with three synoptics, one gospel that stands out amongst the rest that chronicle for us the life and living legacy of the one who is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Read it to be safe. Believe it to be holy. Understand it to be what God designs you to be. It is the pilgrim's compass. It is the saint's strength. It is the sinner's only hope and it is the church's shout. It's why, ladies and gentlemen, I am often saddened by saints who can hear what God has to say and sit silently but dance when zodiacal music comes on. There ought to be something in your heart that says God speaks to my every situation. He speaks to my every circumstance. When I am saddened by what life has to offer, I am reminded that weeping may endure for a night, but if I can just hold on long enough, joy will come in the morning. When my life is falling apart, I find courage, Lisa, in knowing, and we know all things work together for the good, for those who are the called according to his glory. And when my enemies seek to devour me, I find courage and solace in Psalms 23, verse 5. Ladies and gentlemen, I listen to the president of the largest publishing house in the known world, who is an Indian, who says to us that the most quoted verse of the Bible out of all 31,102 version, two verses in the King James Version, the most quoted verse in the Bible is not Genesis 1 and 1 and God created the heavens and the earth. It's not that verse. It's not 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 where the scriptures are clear about prayer and says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. It is not Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be careful for nothing, but with everything, with prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. No, my friends, out of all 31,102 verses of the Bible, the most quoted verse in the whole canon is 20, Psalms 23, verse 5. And here is what it says. God has a place of blessing with your name written on on it. God says, I know you're not invited to everybody's table, but when I have a table, I not only have a seat for you, I have a whole table for you. But the problem, ladies and gentlemen, is I prepare the table in front of people who can't stand you, don't like you, don't want to see you prosper, don't want to don't want you to have anything. The psalmist puts it like this, thou prepare with the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. May I borrow your intellects and imagination for just two minutes. I want to borrow your intellect and imagination for 120 seconds. You can time me. Imagine for a moment that a special celebration is about to be held for you. You pick out your outfit to make sure it fits right. You fast for about 48 hours to make sure that what could be a bump is now slim. I need somebody to pray with me. You are making certain that all of your friends get the invitation because you don't want a party by yourself. So you invite your friends, your family, your cousins and cousins who are not really cousins but since y'all been kicking it for so long, they're your cousin friend. Are you listening to me? The list gets in. The night final it comes and you don't get picked up by just any car. No ma'am, no sir. It is a Maybach G16 fully loaded. When they come to your house to pick you up for your celebration, you open the door to the G16 and all of your sin friends are there. Let me pause because you got church friends, school friends, and sin friends. <clears throat> 
I need all of y'all with about five sipping friends to say amen right here. This show, amen. You get into the back seat and the party has already begun. As you get to the hotel, Deacon Boudreaux, it's no ordinary hotel. It's Houston's finest. It's at the St. Regis where the rooms are $669 a night. You get out and feel like a star and a celebrity because they are popping pictures of you as you stroll down this red carpet. You get inside and the DJ knows your name. It's about to be on and popping in here. You sit down at a table that's prepared for you and you don't notice it at first, but when you look a little bit carefully and a little bit more closely, you learn that some of the people that have hurt you in your past are staring you in your face. Ladies and gentlemen, the abuser is there, the, 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 the user is there, the loser is there, the liar is there, the backbiter and the fighter are there. That no good friend of yours that talk bad about you, that joker is there, your ex is there. Oh my God. Not that joker that took the toaster and the blender. You mean to tell me you are here? I need you to pray. Are you praying? You get to the table and the people you can't stand the most are there. The thief that took your money. The rapist that no one knows about. The joker that dropped you like a bad habit. The cheater, the slacker, the packer, and the hater are all at your table. Your special guest whose name is above every name who we know as Adonai looks at you, winks his eye, and says to you, don't panic. I'm about to bless you like crazy. But I took the time to invite some of your enemies because they serve a special purpose in your life. It's not like you got to create these. I've allowed them to happen because in their face, I'm going to show them just how good I can be, just how wonderful I am, just how powerful I am, just how sweet I am. There are those of you seated in this cathedral who have never been wounded by people. You have never been lied on or talked about or misunderstood. All of the people in your face actually like you. Everybody pats you on your back, wants you to succeed. I have made this disclaimer because this sermon is not for you, but for everybody in here who has been lied on, talked about, misunderstood, stabbed in your back, verbally abused, demeaned, and treated horribly. I want you to stand to your feet. Everybody in here who can say Pastor Adolf, just when I thought I could trust them, that joker turned their backs on me. Just when I thought she was my sorrow. You learn everybody wearing your color ain't your kind. I need for 50 people who have been damaged by other people to look at a neighbor and tell them I got a table but my enemies are there and God says don't you move your enemies I want them to watch you prosper I want them to see what I'm I need about 10 of y'all in here who have lived long enough to testify that everything they try to do to hurt me God use that to turn around and bless me everything they thought they took from me God has given me double for my trouble I think we ought to take about five seconds right quick and say thank God for good enemies thank God for the lies they told the damage they did the stuff that they tried to do to wipe me out because after all of that I am still here hallelujah be seated hallelujah I'm on the clock they told me I got so much time can I throw this in that miss Doesn't this, doesn't this, doesn't this text kind of pinch? Lonzo, just think about it. I'm preparing the table. It's just for you. Wait, hold on, y'all. I didn't, the text doesn't say I'm preparing a meal. The whole table. You know, what's on the table is more than what you can eat. So God says, I have you in the lane of overflow and abundance. But, however, nevertheless, consequently, 
I'm going to put the table in the presence. Can I throw this in? I didn't even talk about this this morning, but the Lord just sent me a text message right quick. You know, people want what you have, but they don't know what you have to go through to get it. And if they can see what you've gone through to get it, they may not want it no more. Tell your neighbor, I've been lied on. I have been buked. I have been scorned. I have been dead. Listen to me. I have had to cry sometime. But God, okay, wait. The existential interrogative that we pull from is why. Hey, Deacon Limbrick, chairman, why? Why does God sit our enemies at the table? Number one, let me see if I cover as much as I can. Number one, watch this. He wants your enemies to notice his guard over your life. The table is yours. Everybody say it's mine. The problem is, folk will be there who don't want you to have it. Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all missed it. Listen, <clears throat> there's always somebody in your face that does not want, I got an amen cone. I like this. You can talk to me if you can. I'm Baptist. That's legal. You know, wait a minute. Listen, <clears throat> there is always somebody in your face who does not want you to have it. And God intentionally sits them at your table. So then what should be your role? How should you respond? Everybody say this. Listen to this. Wait, are y'all ready? You ready? Stay focused. Look at your neighbor and say, stay focused. If you lose your focus, you'll be so concerned about them, you miss him. See, it's him that prepared the table. So why are you going to let them steal your joy? Some of y'all can't hardly have church because some of them here. You ought to shout just because they watching. You ought to say, uh-huh, after all you try to do, I'm going to say thank you just because I can. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Thou preparest a table. I got 10 minutes. Thou preparest a table before me. It's a designated place of blessing specified for you. Let me say this to you. Even though I know God has already blessed everybody here in special and unique ways, the great news of the morning is this. He's not through blessing you just yet. You know, some stuff I write, God gives me to say, and I just figured we ought to have to take a break after God says that because there's some stuff that ought to just make a saint shout. Listen, even though God has already blessed everybody here, the good news of the morning, Otwin, is he ain't through blessing you just yet. Hold on, I'm going to say it one more time. He ain't through yet. He's got more coming your direction. In fact, if you could see some of what God has in store for you, there would be no way you could be sitting down looking at me. You'll be talking about hallelujah, God, for the degree that's coming, the job that's coming, the increase that's coming, the door that's opening, the house that's aimed at me for the blessing of good health. Lord, if you could just get a glimpse of what God has coming, I feel like you ought to tell somebody it's coming, it's coming. Ladies and gentlemen, I got to hurry. The mistake of your enemies, ladies and gentlemen, is they do not understand just how important you are to God. If you want to make a mama mad, mess with her children. 
if you want to see a different view of a father mess with his daughter, ladies and gentlemen, I need about 10 of y'all in here who can go berserk, lose it, lose all prayer life if somebody messes with one of your children. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, you can't be my enemy and be God's friend. It's because God cares too much about me. I'm about to shout by myself. Tell your neighbor, be careful how you treat me. Be careful how you, y'all ain't talking. Look at your neighbor and say, be careful what you say about me. You ought to be careful how you handle me. Don't you know God loves me? Don't you know that he woke me up? He started me on my way? Do you not realize God fights my battles? Ladies and gentlemen, God puts the table in the presence of your enemies so that you will know which way to run and so that your enemies will know who's been keeping you. Friends, I'm almost out of time. Let me just squeeze this in. God is a God who keeps us. And here was what I mean about that. God has kept some of y'all from slapping some people. You would have, listen to me, you ain't got to be holy this Sunday. You can wait till next week. I need about three of y'all who said, now you know I'm going to lay hands on them, but God just wouldn't let you. Somebody say, I've been kept. I need somebody in here who's been kept from cussing a whole bunch of time. I feel it in my spirit. I need to let it out, but God just keeps on keeping me. I need about 25 of y'all who've been kept from acting a plum fool. You was going to lose it all, but God just held you in the hollow. I need about 50 of y'all who don't mind celebrating with me. Jump to your feet and tell your neighbor I have been kept hallelujah hallelujah I said hallelujah God will keep you in perfect peace God will keep your mind God will hold your tongue God will give you peace in your journey. God will order your steps. Wait, can I give you really the real shout? God will keep you in such a way you can see them and say stuff like, how you doing? How your children? Why? Because everything you did to hurt me, God then turned that thing around and made it bless me. When you dropped me, God picked me up. When you walked out, the Holy Ghost walked in here. When you took it, God increased it. Who am I talking to? I need for 50 of y'all in here to high five a neighbor and say, neighbor, he has kept me through storm and rain, sickness and pain, up and down, have and have not. He has kept me. I got to hurry. Okay. I have three minutes left. But I just got to go ahead and say this. Your neighbor that's looking at you funny is only looking at you funny because they don't know what you've been kept from. See, if they knew what you've been kept from, they would help you shout right here. You can tell your neighbor you were not there. Hold on, this is just a moment of disclaimer. Say, you were not there when I cried myself to sleep and I had vengeance in my heart. But God made me hold my peace because he was going to fight my battle. Tell your neighbor, you were not there when I thought I couldn't win no more. Depression set in my soul, but I discovered that the joy of the Lord is still my strength. Ain't he all right? I said, ain't he all right? If you, if you, have ever been kept by God I want you to stand on your feet let your life be a testimony that God is a God who will keep you in perfect peace and if you know that he's been keeping you all of your life shake your neighbor by the hand hold your neighbor's hand and say neighbor he's been there All the time, he's been preparing a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Ain't he all right? I said, ain't he all right? Find one more hand. 
find a different hand and say, neighbor, say, neighbor, you don't know like I know what the Lord how good God Almighty has done for me. He healed me. Yes, he did. He delivered me. Good God Almighty, who am I preaching to in here? If it's you, take your hand and wave it like you've been born again. Take that same hand, throw it around your neighbor's neck and say, neighbor, neighbor, God will take care of you. God will, yes, he will. Take care of you. Won't he do it? Have you tried him? If you've ever seen the Lord open a door that no man can close, but he what he makes your enemies watch as you walk in. Tell your neighbor it's why I got what I have because I had enemies who tried to take it from me. But God didn't just give it back to me. He gave it to me double for my trouble. He's done more. He's done more. More than I could have ever asked him for. Is there anybody here who can thank God for more? Lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Hopefully some of your enemies are watching. And tell God thank you. said I feel all right can I ask you one question have you tried him do you know him won't he lay it out for you he'll give you your joy back your peace back your life back your shout back your purpose back I got one more question ain't he all right ain't he all right say yes say yes Say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes. Let me see the hands who got fake friends and real enemies. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, this shout is for folk who don't like me. Open your mouth and shout yes, Lord. Open your mouth and shout yes, Lord. Open your mouth and shout, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Open your mouth and shout, thank you. Open your mouth and shout, thank you. Open your mouth and shout, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Open your mouth and shout, glory. Open your mouth and shout, glory. Open your mouth and shout, glory. Open your mouth and shout worthy. Open your mouth and shout worthy. 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 Hey! 
if you have ever been hurt, ever been wounded by people, I want you to simply find the neighbor's hand. Ever been dropped? Ever been wounded? Ever been verbally abused? Physically abused? There are times that when we think about the hurt that's been inflicted, and you read a verse like Psalms 23, verse 5. Some of the people who do the damage are the closest to you. And here's what God says do. He says, stay focused. I didn't take a break when that happened. It's a part of what causes your table to exist. God works in mysterious ways. He takes the worst of conditions to produce the strongest of saints. So heads are bowed, hearts are humble. God, I've tried my best to say what you told me to say, to teach what you told me to teach to proclaim what you've given me to proclaim. And my prayer right now is really not for me. It's for the hand that I'm holding. That you would take bitterness, human hurt, and things that have happened that my neighbor can't really talk about and heal them so that they can let other people see what your grace looks like. Oh, and God, just one more thing. Thank you for the people who walked out of my neighbor's life. Because when they walked out, you walked in. Thank you for the people who calls my neighbor to cry because God from their tears came their joy. Thank you, oh God, for those who gave up on my neighbor because when they gave up, 